In the beginning of my career working in youth mental health, I met a young man who totally transformed how I understood how to help people, really how to help myself. About 20 years ago, I was working at a teen homeless shelter in Denver, Colorado when I met Patrick. Patrick was a refugee. When he was seven, he watched his father get murdered by soldiers. His mother was able to help him flee his country's violence to get to some relatives in the States, but Patrick hadn't heard from her since and basically assumed that she was dead. Uh, the relatives in the States were distant and resentful of another mouth to feed. So eventually he wound up in the foster care system where he bounced from place to place for years and you know, wound up on the streets. Patrick had a backstory that I couldn't possibly fathom um, and it haunted me when he talked about it. But the thing about Patrick was he was one of the most warm and hopeful people I'd ever met. He smiled almost constantly. He was funny in a sincere and self-deprecating way. Um, he taught himself English by watching Sesame Street and then would say that's why he had a Big Bird accent. He had emotional issues, but he was very dedicated to working on them. And he worked on everything so hard. At nights, he would sling blizzards at Dairy Queen, and during the days, he would take the highest level advanced placement courses at his high school. And so when he came to me and told me that he'd been accepted to, to Harvard with an academic scholarship, it seemed natural, like it was a given. Until I remembered everything that Patrick had to get through to get to that precise point. What I was recognizing in Patrick was this innate ability to get stronger when he was faced with challenges. He wouldn't just survive adversities, he'd actually thrive in overcoming them. And what I was recognizing was the power of resilience. The only predictable thing about life is its unpredictability. Um, you know, aggravation to annoyance, trauma to tragedy, the human condition is bound up with heartache, stress, obstacles, and this can make our time on Earth frightening and overwhelming. And these, these times that we're so worried about ducking the cosmic curveballs that are being hurled at us lead us to feel powerless and helpless and hopeless, which lead us in turn to behaviors that are disruptive, disengaging, and dangerous. So the question is, how do we, in light of all this, be more like Patrick, where we can not just survive, but thrive. How do we, and how do we, knowing that down the road somewhere, something is gonna happen to us that changes who we are, where we're going, what we feel, how do we live our best lives? And the answer I found to that question is adaptability. Too often people are focused on the goal of being stable. They want stability, but that's just not gonna happen. And so adaptability is really what we need to turn to. Resil resilience is the ability to positively adapt to negative circumstances. In other words, resilience is our ability to beat the odds. Now back to Patrick for just a moment. At first, I saw Patrick as this uh, amazing outlier, a singular entity, like a star that rose higher than the rest. But it, I took some time to research and learn, and I found that I was thinking about this totally wrong. Um, resilience isn't some innate characteristic that some lucky people are born with, but it's a process. A process that people can draw from their inner strengths and get support from external sources to prosper. And so this meant two really important things to me as a young professional. One, it meant that Patrick, as amazing and unique as he was, and he was, was not alone in his capacity to be resilient in, in his fortitude. And two, and probably more importantly, I realized that resilience can be grown, fostered, learned, and developed. So the light bulb that went off in my head changed the course of my, my career. I had previously thought that the best, I'd, I'd worked to help people avoid negative situations and to provide reactive support after something bad had happened. And I thought, well, I'm, I've been going about this the wrong way. I need to be proactive and illuminate those strengths and supports that people already have to, to make it so they can adapt to whatever 
the world throws at them. I became a, a devotee to the power of resilience and it guided my career um, ever since. And this passion led me to the place where arguably the need for resilience is at its highest, a public middle school. Now, um, I want you to take a second. Well, when I tell people that I'm a middle school counselor, I get usually the same look from people. They, they look somewhere, it's, a, it's an expression somewhere between condolences and like sheer terrors. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably natural because we all remember our own formative years, or perhaps we think about our children or grandchildren as middle schoolers, and it, you know, it can be embarrassing. I want you to think back to your own time as a middle schooler. Okay. Close your eyes if you need to. See yourself in your mind's eye. You're dressed in the height of the fashion. I myself, this means that I am dressed in neon yellow jams and a Looney Tunes t-shirt because early 90s. If you don't know what jams are, you can find me after the talk and I will do my best to explain what they are. But I want you to think about how cool and calm and collected you were in any social situation, speaking in class, uh, playing dodgeball, trying out for the mathletes. I want you to think about how smooth you were when you were talking to that person you were crushing on, how confident you were in your body and your mind, how you were emotionally as cool as a cucumber. Nothing ever fazed you, right? Yeah. Me neither. Developmentally, uh, middle schoolers are a veritable train wreck. Um, they're awkward, egocentric, emotional, hormonal, self-conscious, sometimes a little smelly. Um, they, they, every, part of their every part of their life is changing. Their body, their brain, their school, their expectations, their friends. Just It's constant turmoil under the best of circumstances for middle schoolers. And so many more middle schoolers have exceptional hardships beyond that. They live in poverty. They deal with health issues or mental health issues. They deal with learning disabilities. They have family instability. Any number of, of things that can disrupt their education and disrupt their life. But I absolutely love working with middle schoolers. Middle schoolers, they're full of creativity. They're full of passion. They're full of humor. And they have this drive to try new things, often with unbridled enthusiasm, embarrassing amounts of unbridled enthusiasm sometimes. And so the other thing about middle schoolers is they're at that perfect place developmentally to help them find who they want to be. Middle schoolers may be a little lost, but they are seeking to be better humans, trying to find yourself during a tumultuous time. I think that's something we can all learn from. So what I'm gonna talk about today and teach today is the same thing I teach my middle school stu students, creating your own four sentence resilience pep talk. Four short statements about four vital skills that already exist inside you. Control, coping, connection, and contribution. Now most of you here You've already shown your own personal resilience. You've made it through middle school. Congratulations, that's no small feat. And those of you, I know a couple of you are still in middle school, hang in there. And so many more of you have gone through personal adversities that are so far beyond that too. But it never hurts to remind ourselves about what we have inside already. And that's what this pep talk is all about. So here are the four components. First, control. The beginning of the pep talk is a reminder of what you can control in your given situation. Everybody has choices. We may not like the choices we have. We may not like that we have to make a choice, but we do choose how we react to a situation and how we feel in a situation. And there's power in that. You don't always control what happens to you, but you always control how you react back to it. Second, coping. We need to know what skills we have to help ourselves through those troubled times. I spend a lot of time with my students figuring out what, what sets us off and what we can do to emotionally readjust. The habits, the actions, the behaviors, the thoughts that reduce our stress level and keep us pointed towards positivity. 
Having your own personal toolbox of coping skills is so important to face forward when everything else is going sideways. Third, connection. You don't have to go it alone. In fact, you shouldn't. You should know who around you is there to brace you. The people, places, and things that you can always turn to when you need help. Now, connection takes some effort. It takes open communication, honesty, two-way street. It's a two-way street. And these efforts are always worth more than the, than the sum of their parts because at the end, you have someone who will always have your back, and that's irreplaceable. Fourth, contribution. You matter. We all make this world a more interesting place. One of the best ways to deal with a world that seems uninviting or apathetic or cruel is to fight back with kindness. You can make meaning when things seem meaningless by giving up yourself. A listening ear, a helping hand, a volunteer hour, just a smile to a stranger. Fight somebody else's adversities. Be a force for good to fight your own adversities. Control, coping, connection, contribution. Four ways we can strengthen our resiliency. Four ways we can fight negativity. And four ways we can beat the odds. Now, a pep talk is just that. It's a small, short way we can encourage ourselves and others to be confident going into the unknown. All these skills take time and dedication and practice well beyond telling yourself a simple sentence that's clear. But you need to be able to tell yourself these things. You need to be able to tell somebody else these things. If you don't, if you can't, that gives you a good idea of something that you can work on in yourself, some way that you can get better and grow and develop. So I encourage you this week sometime to yourself or someone else, give them a pep talk. Show them their strengths. Show them that they can make it through. Show them that you have their back. And in this spirit, here's my pep talk for you, this TED Talk with Valdosta State University audience. No matter what the world holds, don't forget you control your legacy and you make your future by the actions you take and the decisions that you make. Adversities are a given, so take time to breathe, relax, and focus on your own wellness. Connect with one person every day who makes you feel stronger after you talk with them. And finally, never forget our world needs people like you. Resiliency isn't a cure-all. It won't, in and of itself, lift a family out of poverty, or uh, it won't stop emotional pain, mental illness, it won't bring back a loved one, it won't end war or hunger or natural disaster or the pandemic. But what it can do is it can keep you going. It can empower you to remember that you can learn. You can learn from your mistakes. You can grow. You can keep going. You can persevere and be flexible. Sometimes all it does is rem remind us that things don't last forever and that we will eventually find peace and joy or contentment or maybe just acceptance. And I think we all need some of that. I know I need some of that. So today, as we're reflecting on our legacies, I want you to think about how you build yours. Legacies are forged in the fire of adversity. Legacies, nobody earned a legacy through ease of living or by avoiding negative situations. Legacies are not given out on silver platters or found at the bottom of cereal boxes. Legacies are about triumph over hardships, over obstacles, over expectations, over normalcy, over complacency. Resilience is essential in creating your lasting impact. And I hope that my lasting impact is helping others find the strength they already have inside them to create their legacy, no matter what this world brings. Thank you.